Hello and welcome to The Slice. My name is Michael and today I have a very special guest. His name is Ash Povel. Hello, Ash. How are you? I'm great, thank you, Mike. How are you? I'm good. Are you excited about this? Because, you know, you are a fellow filmmaker and a very yeah. good one at that. So it's actually been... Um, quite exciting getting you on the show here today because there's going to be a lot of stuff that we can talk about uh giving lots of value to people that don't know much about video don't know the benefits of video so really this is going to be probably the best episode i've done to date so you know, a video a bit of a video nerd out essentially something like that yeah, yeah. so if you haven't seen the show before um, which i don't judge anybody that haven't um mm. there is 10 minutes to talk about your business um, we're going to ask a lot of questions about video, which is going to be great. And after the 10 minutes, that is it. How does that sound? Yep, that sounds good. But born natural, born natural. Yeah, so the timer has started. So Ash, first of all, for those that don't know who you are, tell us, who are you? Perfect, yeah. So I'm Ash Povel, and I run a company called That Video Strategy Company. Um, long story short, I've been away from the UK for five years, and I arrived back with a week before lockdown. So perfect timing um, and decided to get the business properly up and running for myself rather than freelancing for other people. Um, and it's been going pretty well since, to be honest. Have you uh, previously worked with businesses in video before? Yeah, so I was working occasionally for businesses, but then being brought in by other, say, video agencies to then yeah. do jobs underneath them. Um, and how they started coming about was seeing... Um, a bit of a disconnect between what was being asked from the business owners and what was being delivered by the videographers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And part of that I noticed was just people not taking time to, the videographers not taking time to understand what the businesses really needed and the businesses not knowing enough about video to understand what they could actually do with it, essentially. I think, you know, it is hard, isn't it? Because there are so many people out there doing video and there's definitely been an influx in that over the last five to 10 years, because obviously film equipment has somewhat become more affordable. Um, yes. So there are a lot of people coming out of universities and colleges that are going straight into self-employment and they are saying they are, they are videographers. And I suppose it comes down to, I know for me personally, it comes down to, I understand video as art, and it shouldn't be something that should be rushed. And there should be a lot of subconscious tones when piecing together content uh, for a business or for a brand. So how have you found the difference between working for an agency or a, a video company and going self-employed and actually being the person that makes all the ideas and, and actually has a big say in the overall project? Yeah, I absolutely loved it. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to go do it originally was, you know, when you're working for someone, you have an idea, you think something's going to work better, you want to implement something different, yeah. and you can't because the decisions are coming from somewhere else. Um, and part of why I love doing what I do is sitting down, talking to people, learning about the business, seeing where those issues are and what can be done. And when you can see that going on and you're not able to bring those ideas to the table, it does get mm -hmm. quite infuriating. Um, so I've absolutely loved it. It's great. It's been really fun. How have you found businesses that you are working with or potentially work going to work with how have you found their attitudes towards video and and actually video production itself going from you know picking up a camera and not having any knowledge filming and and that being their brand their branded video how have you found that um I mean, it's definitely a shift um during the first meeting or talking with a business owner. I think uh, a lot of times, you know, the word promo video comes up quite often. And once you sort of talk to them about the business in a little bit, there is a lot, like I said, more that can be had through that. Mm -hmm. um, and you start to pad out a big, a bigger picture of a business and actually start to tell the story. I think the term story has been sort of ruined a little bit by the likes of Simon Cowell and the Britain who's got talent lot to go on and cry and use it as a crutch. Um, but actually if you, a business and you want to get your brand sorted, you have to get your story right. But your story isn't, um, is where a lot of people know, get confused when you talk to the business owners. Your story isn't what you do or where you've come from or how you've got there essentially. What it is, is what your customer's coming to you through, what your customer goes through. And that's the sort of change that businesses have to go through, which is you're not making videos for yourself. You know, your brand is what your customers are coming to you for. You have to tell their story of why they would use you. 
So seeing yeah. that go on is always interesting and different with that when you have a bit of time to sit and talk through it with someone. I think also branding is important and having uh, production value is, is important because I know pers- from a personal point of view, say I was going to buy an online course and you had Joe Blogs that filmed it on his smartphone with no idea what to do. Now, I'm not saying that you can't achieve it on a smartphone because I teach that. So you can, but you have to have the knowledge. You have to know how to story tell. You have to understand lighting, sound, composition. Uh, you have to, you know, have to. You have to do a bit of homework. But um, for the likes of Joe Blogs, who just gets out his phone and it's underexposed, you can hardly hear him. Um, but he's he's expecting someone to pay for for that product. Now and then you've got another Joe Blogs. Um, who has invested in video, has hired a professional, has sat down and worked with that filmmaker and, and actually worked for a process of what are we looking to achieve? What do you want at the end of this? How do you want it to look? Um, you know very well that you're going to go for the second Joe Blogs. Um, you're going to go for the production value because, you know, if, if you're going to buy something that doesn't look a high quality, it really does have a detrimental effect on your business, doesn't it? Do you find that a lot of people don't get that aspect when it comes to video? I think a lot of people find it hard to blur the lines between when you can use video that maybe isn't perfectly shot, you know, it's filmed yourself, and when not to use it. And that all comes down to where somebody is in the customer journey. If you're putting something out there that's designed to tell your brand story, attract new customers, this sort of stuff, you don't want it to be you know, filmed on your phone, talking to camera or something like that. If somebody's already a customer and you're adding more value to them or you're getting this real personal touch in with them, you know, that's, that's fine. But you've got to make sure they're already at that stage. You wouldn't put out an advert. Let's give you a quick, like, size of a company. You know, Mini Cooper, BMW, as your car's getting made, you'll get little clips of your, you know, your car being plugged mm-hmm. together yeah, and stuff like that. Them, yeah. Well, yeah. But on the television, you don't see that do you because on one side they're building a little personal touch here when you're already a customer on the other side they're trying to advertise to get people into the business showing off how big fancy and great they are and you have to understand that like when you're in the awareness stage you need something usually that's a higher higher quality better produced well put together you know once somebody's in your ecosystem they're already a customer you can do the different differently shot things it's that no like and trust as well like when they actually see the value that you've given their business their brand um i think they do realize wow you know this has actually helped me out a lot um in terms of the pandemic and obviously the the lockdown and people having to embrace video people who have you know come across the likes of skype zoom facetime people have had to embrace a technology that's been around for many years How do you find now when you are going out to potential clients, how do you find their attitudes have changed? Oh, I think, I think once you're already there, people are obviously already convinced that video is important now. I think Mm -hmm. everyone, I think that's happened in general. I spoke to friends who are in SEO, website building, where all of a sudden over the space of three weeks, everyone who'd said, oh, the website's on the back burner, we'll get it done. Everyone got it done in the same couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I think video has been the same sort of shift. I think it's been just more of a, as opposed to a particular shift in video, it's been more, I'm just, I shift online for everyone at the exact same time. And obviously video is just a huge part of that, especially when you're talking about showcasing your business and what you're like to work with and things like that. There's not a, there isn't a better way to do it. It's as simple as that, aside from getting somebody in and doing work for them. Exactly. And so where did your video journey start? How did, did you, when did you first pick up a camera? Oh, I don't know. When I was probably 16, I'd say. I wasn't one of those, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't one of those sort of, um, you know, always had a camera in my hand since I could walk sort of people. Um, yeah. I took a media studies class at 16 because I had to fill in my subjects and I just loved it and went from there. Didn't put a camera down since. Um, was never sure what I wanted to do. And then when I started, when I discovered camera work, if you like, that's when I was like, yeah, this is what I want to get into. This is what I want to do. And what do you prefer, the filming aspect or, or the editing aspect? Oh, definitely the filming. Definitely. Yeah. I enjoy the satisfaction of editing at the end and when you watch something back that is completely done. That is a satisfying feeling. Mm. But 
from the time when the footage gets imported until the time that's done is just, <laughs> yeah, yeah i think the other 99 percent isn't that great that one percent payoff and when you see someone's reaction to a video that's fantastic like yeah. when you sort of watch it for you know and you've made them look better than they thought they were going to look and the business comes off amazing that stuff's yeah. great but that's your process yeah i i don't struggle with it but it's definitely not my favorite um element to get involved with so I won't outsource my editing to you then. No. Um, so, uh, but it's funny actually, I mean, I, I like both aspects. However, I'm always, and this is why I like to try and get it done either started on that day of filming, uh, depending on time that I finish filming. Uh, but I always like to make a start that day or the next day so that I've kind of cut it down or I've synced up audio and I've got it roughly ready to, to cut down. Mm -hmm. But I always, and I don't know if you're the same, have that moment of... <sighs> Right, let's let's get this started. But then when you start shaping it, you start cutting it down, you start seeing the story, and then you've got a lot to play with and you've got a lot to throw in. It's like, right, I know where I'm going with this now. And yeah, I, that's where the real creativity side comes from because it's bringing that image to life with the color grade, syncing up the, the audio. Oh, that, that made me jump then. That made me jump. I feel like it did, didn't it? Just 10 minutes yeah. gone. And there was yeah. so much I wanted to ask you. I think I'm going to have to maybe get you back on the show. Yeah. Are you I'll up for that? that? Yeah, definitely. That literally made me jump. And yeah. None of them have made me jump uh, like that before. So we must have been really in the, in the zone. There's so much more I wanted to, uh, to ask you. And I think maybe it's a case of bring you back in a couple of weeks' time and, uh, and see where you're at. But have you enjoyed yeah, it? Go for it. Yeah, that, that went so fast. It did, Absolutely didn't it? Yeah. I'm just ten sure minutes. You did ten minutes. Yeah, it was ten minutes. <laughs> it wasn't one minute. Did you miss a zero out? Maybe Ed, I maybe just undercut you by uh, two minutes there. So uh, no, honestly, Ash, thanks so much for coming down. I know no, how me. busy you are, and I know how busy you've been. So I appreciate your time. Um, so if anybody would like to watch any previous episodes, you can go over to youtube.com forward slash 10 Pro. If you'd like to subscribe, then don't forget to hit the button uh, to see all the latest content that's coming on the channel. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon.